Hello, my name is Mark Shenyan, I call Tremoside. Uh, today I just want to show you a few things about CAD design and polygonal modeling and digital sculpting. Um, all of them are slingshot related. So what we start here, what you see here is a, a 3D view port of uh, CAD application. Uh, most of the CAD applications are the same. There are different features, uh, uh, there are different benefits in productivity, but uh, overall uh, the logic is the same. So what we have here is a simple sketch, and this sketch is uh, already defined defined by the measures. So as you can see, if you have a cardboard or a simple uh, graphic layout, uh, you can uh, adapt it into uh, the screen and work it how it's, how it's uh, working out. Um, this tutorial, this is not really a tutorial, it's just an overview to understand uh, how this thing is working and uh, what kind of benefits you have uh, if you are turning uh, your design into a CAD or a polygonal modeling, etc. So, uh, relations are constrained and now uh, edited. So, if I modify something, for example, this measure, uh, the whole design updates because of the relations. For example, tangency, uh, mirroring, and um, etc. So it's well uh, set up. Uh, I have a duplicate measure, so I will delete it. Okay, that's right. Now this design, this reference, uh, could be used as a startup for an extrude, uh, a protrusion. Uh, now I will unsuppress my protrusion, and you see that the simple shape uh, turns into a model. But uh, with an addition, there is a crown. Uh, with the protrusion and uh, that uh, can I could show you the treatment and this treatment shows uh, how it turns the side of the model if uh, for casting etc it could be hel really helpful and adds some geometry and uh, much more sculpture feel for this okay I'll exit this and show another sketch here uh, this sketch is a simple revolve. What you have here is an axis, and in most of the cases you need an axis defined by the size. And uh, also, I just press it, uh, there is a line, and this line is used for a cut. Uh, you can modify it, move it, and uh, create pretty gentle shapes. It's like a blend between uh, normal geometry lines, arcs, and uh, straight lines, uh, but it's more it's a Bezier curve-like uh, stuff. Okay, I will close it and uh, move what it can create. So I will release the cut, and you can see uh, if I press for a net view, okay, a side view, uh, you can see it is cut, it, but not because it is a lot like cat, it also generates uh, a soft blend. Uh, the next step is, in this case, it's just um, mirroring the feature, feature-like uh, uh, stuff. You see a uh, logo can come here. And um, also showing the other thing. Okay, show it. Uh, this is a small uh, dual hole. It's for the band. Uh, you can see there's a cut for the band, an overall cut, and uh, then comes just the rounds. So release the rounds. The first round set is uh, for the side edges. Okay, now it's quite uh, shaping. Of course, it's not my design, and it's um it's a generic uh, slingshot design, so. Uh, please do not criticize <laughs> the wrong proportions uh, or anything else. Um, okay, uh, the other step is for the tips. And uh, another one comes uh, for the band, for the easy tightening. And uh, then the next model part will include the logo. But for first, in most cases, you need to define the working planes in CAD. So you have advantages when you're working with uh, sizes and dimensions and also the planes. If you move the plane, your sketch will go 
with that. Uh, I like to use separately sketches, uh, but most of the programs can uh, create mm, batches. Uh, that means uh, in a feature, there is the feature itself contains the sketch, but I like to visualize my sketches individually, so it's much more uh, easier to modifications for modifications, etc. And then comes uh, here this logo. This logo is uh, projected. So there's a projection, as you can see, here's the original logo script. And because that's a curved surface, it must be projected onto the surface, as you see, this surface. So you can choose this one and add an armor cutout. And it's create an emboss, or an engraved, I'm sorry, engraved uh, logo style. So for this is the quick overview. What, what is the benefits to create something in CAD? I have the first sketch and uh, I want to edit it dynamically. So I see the whole model and maybe I want to change it for a bit larger. And then it needs some time for my computer, but it recalculates the model itself. And you can see is it better or wronger or whatsoever. It's quite interesting. But if I'm not satisfied, I can move back. And because the relations inside the first general sketch, it can keep the over proportions uh, just as I gave the rules for this. Okay, this is for CAD, and now we are moving on for polygonal modeling, which one is quite different, but that also have some benefits. Okay, we are in a polygonal modeling session now. So what you see here is a simple plane. This plane is generated by uh, polygons adding like this. This is the way how it works. So you start with a simple plane and then grab and extend the surface itself. Uh, this is just the half part because after that there comes a mirror. Let's work. And then for the same thickness you can add the modifier, uh, which can create a 3D version for this. As you see, now it's like an extrude, but with uh, a little twist, uh, you can much more adjust separately the sides. As you see, okay, I grab it like this. Um, the next step is to add some kind of smoothing. Uh, it this modeling technique is also called uh, subdivision modeling because now you mm, you can see there are uh, polygons, squares, quads, and these quads could be divided. No division, one division, two divisions. That's fine, but I missed the edges. Now here comes the hard part because you have to manually model these edges. I'll turn off these things. So this one is also is the same without the smooth, but it's detailed. You see, here's the original edge, and um, this edge here is divided. Because it is divided, it will generate uh, if I turn on the turbo smooth, you can see no division and one division, and that way this edge creates a new one in the middle. And as I rise the iterations, it will be much smoother. So what kind of benefits you have? As you see, it is not as accurate as a normal CAD model, but there are much more possibilities to use symmetries. You can also use these kind of symmetries and rotate them to create a blend like this. It's also working fine. But there's another symmetry. I'll demonstrate how it works also. So I can play a game with that. 
It's better to make design decisions and it's much faster than in CAD application. However, it is not as accurate. It needs really, it's it could be really time consuming if you, if you want to create an as accurate model as in a CAD version. Uh, but what kind of benefits we have? For example, this is a um, deform box. And with this deform box, I just want to show you how it works. I can uh, grab contour points, and these contour points could be moved. So when I want to make a new design, I can make it with distortions. I can add dramatic changes to this. Okay, it's worth nothing, but uh, quite dynamic. So, step back. And I um, just want to show the logic. Because with this, we can add multiple parts and multiple modifications, uh, just like features in CAD. So, there is another... Excuse me, I have to show the left side. Uh, with another bounding box, I can make the shape much more like in the CAD version. So this modifier is just for the sides. The first is for all the overall, and then comes the side. But you can use it separately, so it's a non-destructive modeling, but it is a bit linear. Uh, of course, when you want to create something changed it changes okay i will see now you see the edges uh, so for example i want to grab this and turn on the show full view and just grab it and move you see what it's changing <coughs> i'm just grabbing the points excuse me for the crouching and um, there are some other chances to mod make modifications. Okay, it's pretty ugly now, so I will stop it. But it showed uh, quite well the capabilities of polygonal modeling. And now we move into digital sculpting. Digital sculpting will start with this model, uh, exported, and uh, I can add some features for that. Okay. Okay, uh, it is the last step, and um, I just want to show you the digital sculpting uh, work. Just uh, move the model. I want to show you how dense it is. These are all small polygons, micro polygons, quads mainly. There's some nasty place here, but it, it can work. So what we can do in a sculpting program. Uh, for example, we can sculpt. Like this. At the moment I'm using a mouse, not a tablet. And um, it's uh, way harder. But I can make it much more fluent with a steady stroke. But it's really far from what I want. I just want to show you how can you add uh, different kind of um, embosses, engravements, um, patterns, um, and other things. Um, I have some school images. Uh, I will use this one and set as a stencil. So when I turn to the free view, hit this size, I can hide it and show it. A little bit smaller, and I want to align the model. And now I'll paint it. Oh, steady stroke is on. I have to turn it off. Yep. And now painting it. Yeah, that's great. Turn on, turn off, and I just smooth the sides. My brush is a bit uh, big, so I can reduce, reduce the strength also. And because it is a projected image, it could be used for making a mold also. 
it's a bit harder to turn this stuff into a NURB surface uh, for CAD machining, uh, for CNC, but uh, it is possible. It needs some time and some tips and tricks, but uh, it can work. But this one is definitely printable. It's not ready for 3D printing, but this one is a printable uh, version. Okay, I just want to show you another kind of thing. Uh, just a moment. Um, now I have a different uh, skull, and uh, I just aligned it to uh, create a, a stamp line. I start to grab it right on the edge and as you can see it symmetrically creates the pattern so now what we have is like this so when you want to create uh, a custom surface for your grip or a custom logo it also works fine this one now is extremely detailed really high resolution but not high enough to uh, avoid these steps here but with a smooth and smaller brush it can be eliminated and you can also sculpt it further if you want to creating micro details like uh, rising the zygomatic etc so it's working fine but I have to switch off these stuffs and use a pure brush oh, that's so strong and it's quite big now as you can see it's still so strong it's just like a method push it and push it back rise it up creating some stuffs harder surface and smoothen so it could be must more like an eye or also just grab it a little bit the brush is too small but an evil skull is here okay so this is a general 3d workflow to creating a slingshot Polygons and uh, CADs are not the same, but both of them have the benefits. So if you want to create a very customized slingshot, I think go for polygonal modeling and digital sculpting. But if you want to create a product uh, for mass marketing, it's much better to stay with the CAD. Thank you for your time. See you. Goodbye.